History was made yesterday. One of the biggest political comebacks in our generation. Last night, Donald Trump became the 47th president-elect of the United States. Honestly, it's really hard to believe, especially after everything that has happened, particularly within this calendar year. The fact that Trump overcame every obstacle, from the political persecution to the lawfare to the assassination attempts, etc. And not only that, but to also sweep the popular vote, as well as have Republicans secure the Senate and maintain control of the House, this is probably one of the most incredible things that I've ever seen in politics. Well, we're going to unpack all of that today, and for those of you that might have missed it, I'll also give you a summary of events that went on last night and share with you a few thoughts on how we should move forward now that the next president of the United States has been chosen. All this and more on today's episode of Daniel's Brew. Alright, so yesterday, coverage of the election was going on all day. But the party really kicked off last night around 7 p.m.-ish Eastern Time, when the polls started to close on the East Coast states and preliminary results started to come in to the news networks. Trump took an early lead, capturing 23 electoral votes by way of Indiana, Kentucky, and West Virginia, with Kamala trailing behind with only three votes at that time. Then after about an hour, at the next round of poll closings, Trump extended his lead to 45 electoral votes by adding Oklahoma, Mississippi, and Alabama. Kamala gained some ground as well, with an additional 10 electoral votes through Maryland, which puts her total at 13. And then shortly after that, we got our first big wave of additional ballot reporting, and Trump took a commanding lead by adding on Florida, South Carolina, and Tennessee, bringing him to 95 electoral votes. Kamala also grew to 35 electoral votes with the addition of Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. Then throughout the course of the evening, Trump's vector really started to take off. And by around 9 p.m. Eastern Time, he had recorded 137 electoral votes, with the addition of Arkansas, Louisiana, Ohio, both Dakotas, Wyoming, and the statewide vote for Nebraska. Kamala's pace was accelerating as well by this time, and she was able to capture Illinois, New York, New Jersey, and Delaware, bringing her total up to 99 electoral votes. But after that, around 11 p.m. Eastern Time is when this race started to pull away for Trump. By this point, his total had climbed to 214 electoral votes by adding on Kansas, Utah, Idaho, Montana, Texas, Iowa, Missouri, and Nebraska's 3rd Congressional District. And Kamala was at 179 electoral votes at this point, with Washington State, Washington DC, California, Colorado, and Maine's 1st Congressional District. And then, depending on which news network you were watching, Around 2 a.m. Eastern Time, the majority of the rest of the states all posted their results, and the outcome was truly surprising. Now, one quick thing to point out here is that one of the nail-biter states in this election was Pennsylvania. And if you've been paying attention to the news before yesterday, you would know that this is one of the most contested states, and so both Kamala and Trump spent a lot of time campaigning there. While the final posting of the results was a bit delayed due to a software issue that they had which affected their ballot scanning machines, in uh, Cambria County in Pennsylvania. But when they finally came in, this state pretty much sealed the deal for a Trump victory. Trump had captured this blue wall state of Pennsylvania with a narrow 50.8% to 48.2% lead. And that, combined with Louisiana and North Carolina, and then ultimately another blue wall state in Wisconsin, got him to 277 electoral votes, making him the next president-elect for the United States. Now again, depending on which news network you were watching, the results were not 100% official yet, but given that there was just about no remaining path to victory for Kamala, at approximately 2.30 a.m. Eastern Time, Trump decided to come out and address his supporters at his venue in West Palm Beach. Here are a couple of moments from his victory speech. Frankly, this was, I believe, the greatest political movement of all time. There's never been anything like this in this country and maybe beyond. And now it's going to reach a new level of importance because we're going to help our country heal. We're going to help our country heal. We have a country that needs help, and it needs help very badly. We also have won the popular vote. That was great. We have taken back control of the Senate. Wow, that's great. And it also looks like we'll be keeping control of the House of Representatives. That's right. I mentioned this briefly before, but throughout the course of the evening, the Republicans actually gained the majority in the Senate by flipping three seats and achieving a total of 52 seats thus far. And as of the time of this recording, in the House, 
They've also been able to flip four seats, with a current count of 200 Republican seats to 181 Democratic seats. So it looks like for the moment that they're actually trending towards keeping control of the House as well. And amazingly enough, it also looks like Trump might even win the popular vote. The count, as of the time of this recording, is 71 million total votes for Trump and 66 million total votes for Harris. So that's a difference of about 5 million votes. Honestly, I don't know if anyone could have predicted an even better performance for the Trump campaign than this. I mean, they pretty much crushed every aspect of this race. Now, going back to Trump and his victory speech, what I found impressive and reassuring about Trump is that he immediately turned to a tone of unity and reconciliation for this country in his speech, as he recognized the honor and privilege of going back to the White House to finish the job that he'd started back in 2017. Here, let's listen a bit further. So I want to thank the American people for the extraordinary honor of being elected your 47th president and your 45th president. And to every citizen, I will fight for you, for your family, and your future. Every single day, I will be fighting for you, and with every breath in my body. I will not rest until we have delivered the strong, safe, and prosperous America that our children deserve and that you deserve. This will truly be the golden age of America. That's what we have to have. I hope that you're going to be looking back someday and say that was one of the truly important moments of my life when I voted for this group of people beyond the president, this group of great people. And under President Trump's leadership, we're never going to stop fighting for you, for your dreams, for the future of your children. And after the greatest political comeback in American history, we're going to lead the greatest economic comeback in American history under Donald Trump's leadership. It's time to put the divisions of the past four years behind us. It's time to unite. And we're going to try. We're going to try. We have to try. And it's going to happen. Success will bring us together. I've seen that. I've seen that. I saw that in the first term when we became more and more successful. People started coming together. Success is going to bring us together. And we are going to start by all putting America first. We have to put our country first for at least a period of time. We have to fix it. Because together we can truly make America great again for all Americans. So I want to just tell you what a great honor this is. I want to thank you. I will not let you down. America's future will be bigger, better, bolder, richer, safer, and stronger than it has ever been before. God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you very much. This was a good speech. It wasn't divisive or overly boastful, and it focused on the future and how we would rebuild this country. And did you also notice him saying that success brings us together? You know, this is why I have so much hope for this country, now that I know Trump will be the next president. If you look back at the last four years, truthfully speaking, the American people have been taking a bit of a beating. Not only were we struggling with sky-high living costs and the unaffordability of houses and out of control interest rates, but we also had record levels of crime and an illegal immigration crisis. And on top of all of that, we were so mentally exhausted from thinking about the Ukraine-Russia war and the conflict in Israel and Gaza. And honestly, it just, it's been a pretty tough four years, right? But what Trump said about success bringing us together is absolutely true. You see, this reminds me of a time where I led a corporate team in launching a major project that demanded a lot of overtime effort. My team and I worked hard. And for several months, we put in a lot of late hours, way above your average 9 to 5 schedule. But we did it all with a cheerful attitude because we knew how much this work and the launch of this project would positively contribute to the company. And so when we burned the midnight oil while keeping all of this in mind, the physical toll of this hard work, it didn't seem so bad. And it was all worth it when we finally launched the project and reaped the fruits of our labor. You see, I believe Trump's next presidency will be similar to this. It'll be a lot of grinding and hard work and maybe even some long hours. And I'm not talking about just Trump and his team, but even for us, the American people, as we participate in turning around the state of this country. But when you start to see inflation go down and the cost of living reduce, and when all of the foreign conflicts start to slowly subside and migrant crime becomes less frequent, however hard your current work is, it will seem just a little bit lighter. When you're succeeding, it doesn't matter how hard you have to work. 
It just doesn't seem as bad. And when the American people collectively feel this way, we start to have more empathy for one another and a more heightened sense of relatability arises among us, which starts to bring together a greater sense of unity. See, when things are difficult, it's hard to be patient and understanding of one another. But when things start to look up, we have more of an ability to see deeper within each other and find more understanding and common ground. And that's why that line of success bringing us together really resonates with me, and why I'm hopeful that we'll start to see that towards the beginning of this next Trump presidency. Now let's fast forward to today. Earlier in the afternoon, Kamala Harris came out to address the nation and give her concession speech. Here's what she had to say. My heart is full today, full of gratitude for the trust you have placed in me, full of love for our country, and full of resolve. The outcome of this election is not what we wanted, but hear me when I say the light of America's promise will always burn bright. We have been intentional about building community and building coalitions, bringing people together from every walk of life and background, united by love of country with enthusiasm and joy in our fight for America's future. But we must accept the results of this election. Earlier today, I spoke with President-elect Trump and congratulated him on his victory. I also told him that we will help him and his team with their transition and that we will engage in a peaceful transfer of power. So first, I'm sure that wasn't an easy speech to make. And so I have to give her credit for coming out, fully acknowledging the loss of the election and committing to a peaceful transfer of power. This was the right approach to take. And while I truly believe that she is the wrong candidate for the office of the presidency, and I'm glad that Trump became the president-elect, I still have to hand it to her for handling this loss with grace and with a tempered approach as she addressed the nation in her speech. You see, in order for the country to start healing, it does take both parties to put down their knives and extend the hand of peace. And I'm not sure if both parties are ready for a handshake just yet, but at least from what I saw from Trump last night and what I'm seeing from Kamala today, it makes me think that at least they're starting to put down their knives. And I hope that this is true throughout Congress as well. And lastly, I know most of you guys watching and listening to me are right-leaning like I am. But I also recognize that some of you on the left are here as well. So I just wanted to say that if you didn't vote for Trump this year and you're feeling despondent and you truly believe that Trump might ruin this country, then just consider this one thing. When you elect a presidential candidate, it's not just that one particular person that you're getting. You're actually getting their entire team. And if you look at Trump's squad, he actually has a really good collection of players around him this time around. He has JD, who's eloquent, practiced, and an insightful VP that is more than capable of reaching across the aisle to build strong partnerships with the Democratic Party. And then you have Vivek, also young and talented and self-made. And he understands the American dream because he's achieved it, which makes him perfectly and uniquely positioned to push for policies that'll help others achieve this as well. And of course, there's RFK Jr. And I honestly believe that he'll make some really impactful waves in this administration by focusing on his mission to make Americans healthy again. It's an area that I don't think we've been paying much attention to, and I'm so glad that there's a leader now that will make this his priority. And then Tulsi Gabbard. Now, she is a role model that exemplifies what a strong woman of Congress should be. Well-spoken, intelligent, with a strong backbone and conviction in her thoughts. I'm really looking forward to seeing how she'll become an integral part of Trump's cabinet. And who could forget Elon Musk? If he can help implement in Congress even a fraction of the optimization that he's done at Twitter or X, think how much waste we'd be cutting out and how efficiently we would run in this new Trump era. I, I can't wait to see all of this happen. And of course, there are many more that I didn't mention, but just realize that he's coming back into office this time with the A-team. And I guess the point that I'm trying to make here is have an open mind and give this new administration a chance to prove to you and everybody else that they are the right party to be put into office for the next four years. If you look at this team with an objective point of view, you might be surprised at all they can do. All right, so with that, thanks for joining me today and take a moment and just Revel in the fact that you've been a part of something very special and very historic last night. 
And now that the election is over, I'm going to hope and pray that Donald Trump and his administration really is the president and party for all Americans, and that this will be the beginning of a new era of prosperity and unity within our country for the foreseeable future. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for joining me again, and we'll see you next time on Daniel's Brew.